Uh, I am Jeff Larson. I'm the uh, Director of Highway Safety within the Office of Grants and Research and the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security. And we are here today to call attention to the new Massachusetts hands-free law. Uh, today's discussion will highlight the start of enforcement activity, which begins on Sunday, that's February 23rd. Police at that point may issue warnings until April 1st, April Fool's Day, and citations after that will come. Following the speaking program outside, Massachusetts State Police and the Newton Police Department will be partnering with the demonstration on their enforcement, um, and uh, we will we'll go outside after the, uh, the presentations here. Uh, we've come to Newton today in part to highlight the uh, significant concerns related to distracted driving and the outsized impact on pedestrians and bicyclists that occur because of distracted driving. Um, so we will be on the street where pedestrians will be crossing and you'll see the impact on distractions on those, uh, th those vulnerable communities. The city of Newton has uh, unfortunately recent, uh, recently experienced some unfortunate crashes involving uh, these vulnerable road users. And here now, I would like to welcome to this, uh, us to this beautiful city, the uh, Newton Mayor, Ruth Ann Fuller. Good morning, welcome to Newton, everybody. A particular welcome to Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito, Secretary Pollock, Colonel Mason, and um, I'm welcoming us as our chief of police here, Dave McDonald. There are many Newton police officers here in the room. Thank you to each of you. Uh, we're also joined by three uh, state representatives that represent Newton. We have Kay Khan, Ruth Balzer, and John Lawn with us this morning. Thank you for being here. Mary McGuire of AAA Northeast. Uh, we've got our Vice President of the City Council, Rick Lipoff. Thank you for being here. And I see Pam Wright, um, another one of our city councilors. And I'm glad we're putting a spotlight on distracted driving. Yes, we have that issue here in Newton. It's resulted in some crashing crashes. Just want to put this in perspective. So it takes about five seconds to write a text. If you're going 55 miles an hour, that takes you down the length of a football field. That's why we're getting into so much trouble. Turn off your phone, put it in the back seat, pull over if you're gonna use your phone, or please put it in the handy dandy holder that we all need to install in our cars. Um, for the second time this morning, it is an honor and a pleasure to introduce Governor Baker. Thank you for leading in on keeping us safe. Governor Baker. Thank you very much, Mayor, and, and, and to the chief and the other members of his team who are here, thank you for hosting us. And um, let me just start, first of all, by thanking the legislature um, for supporting this legislation during the session and getting this to our desk before the end of the formal session at the end of last year. I do want to say, however, that anybody who doubts whether or not the legislature has a sense of humor should reflect on the fact that, uh, that April 1st is the first day on which people start paying for their tickets. Um, that's a very interesting choice, guys. Um, but I do appreciate that we're talking today about the fact that this law goes into effect this weekend. Um, and that local and state police will start pulling people over uh, and issuing them warnings. Um, you know, there are thousands of crashes in Massachusetts every day and hundreds every year and hundreds of deaths and, uh, and many of those are related to distracted driving. And while there have been a number of studies done that rank states with respect to the best and worst on all kinds of things, uh, Massachusetts uh, consistently ranks among the 10 worst states in the country for distracted driving. And I think in many ways um, this legislation is overdue, but I also believe it will over time save lives. And I think in some ways that's the most important message uh, we should all take away from here today. Um, the technology has moved dramatically over the course of the past decade. Uh, people can use hands-free alternatives. 
uh, at this point in time if they feel the need uh, to talk to somebody while they're in the car. Uh, but there's simply no question that the evidence on this one is clear. Distracted driving is a tremendous risk for the driver, for the passengers in the vehicle, and for anybody who happens to be on the other end of an accident that involves a distracted driver. And uh, I think it's critically important for all of us to understand and recognize that while this law is going into effect shortly, the most important thing we hope we get out of this law is a dramatic change in behavior with respect to how we all think about uh, our time behind the wheel. Um, and with that said, again, I just want to say how much we appreciate the work and the support of the legislature on this issue. Um, and we look forward to working with our colleagues in municipal government and at the state level to ensure that we implement this appropriately and effectively and that hopefully uh, over the course of the next several years we will see uh, a decline in the number of incidents that involve distracted driving because fundamentally that is what this is all about, public safety um, and a reduction in the number of incidents, accidents and tragedies that often result from distracted driving. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. And I do want to um, personally thank you for all of the work you did to uh, move this to become law. So thank you very much. Uh, changing behavior is a very difficult job, especially when it comes to drivers. It's uh, often said that, uh, that these devices are addictive. They are addictive. Education is part of the, pro uh, part of the process of changing behavior, um, but enforcement of the traffic laws is critical in that process as well. Uh, here to talk about the enforcement aspect from a state perspective is Massachusetts State Police Colonel Christopher Mason. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you to the Newton uh, Police Department for hosting us today. Massachusetts State Troopers and local police officers across the Commonwealth respond to tens of thousands of reports involving motor vehicle crashes every year. Sadly, many of these uh, include, involve serious or fatal injuries and other consequences that impact families. One of the leading causes of serious collisions is distracted driving, and the main cause of that distraction is often use of a cell phone. As you have heard today, in three days, the state's new hands-free law goes into effect, meaning that drivers under the age of 18 may only use their phones in hands-free mode. Drivers may only touch their phones to activate the hands-free mode with a touch, uh, tap, or swipe of the phone, or to call 911 to report an emergency. So if you're driving, or even stopped at a traffic light, or stuck in traffic, you cannot handle the phone to make or receive a call, to read or write a text, to use email or the internet, or to conduct any other form of electronic communication. And remember, Drivers under the age of 18 may not use a cell phone at all when driving. Local and state police officers will be out on the roadways to enforce provisions of this new law and to educate motorists. At the state police, we are deploying dozens of additional patrols and all of our regional troops to augment the troops and the patrols that are already on the roads. These troops will serve as a multiplier to the barracks uh, regular patrols that are already out in the street enforcing this uh, important new law. Other patrols will make use of two troopers in a cruiser and will allow for the use of a spotter. Until April 1st, officers will be issuing warnings only in an effort to acclimate motorists to the new law. After that grace period, violators should expect three tiers of fines based on the number of prior offenses. We take our hands-free public education as seriously as we do our enforcement piece. Yesterday we posted a video public service announcement about our law uh, on the MSP YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter pages. And I've also shared information from the state's website at mass.gov backslash handsfree. Our goal is for you to get home safely to the ones you care about and to the ones that care about you. Please work with us to help reduce the number of crashes caused by distracted driving. Please keep your hands on the wheel, your eyes on the road. Nothing on your screen is worth your life or the life of another. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. It took a lot of work by folks on Beacon Hill, the legislatures, to uh, pass this hands-free law. Both houses worked individually and then in conference committee to finally pass what is certainly a life-saving law. 
and I'm happy to introduce Newton Representative Ruth Balzer. Thank you. I'm, I'm very uh, glad to be here, and along with my colleagues, Representative Kay Khan and Representative John Lawn, uh, this is a poignant moment. Uh, it's a wonderful moment because, in some sense, we're celebrating uh, the legislature's uh, meaningful accomplishment, uh, but it's poignant because it was made necessary by tragedy. And uh, I, hats off to the people in Massachusetts, especially those who lost loved ones, who honored the memory of their departed by pushing for this legislation to prevent other people from having to suffer from the tragedy that they suffered from. And I know you're here, uh, and we remember your son. Uh, and so this is uh, the people of Massachusetts called on us to act and to honor those memories, but to really prevent future tragedies. And so today is a wonderful day. I'm proud to be here with my colleagues in the legislature and the governor and in our own police department here in Newton uh, to kick off this really important public safety effort. Thanks for having me. Every five years, states around the country are required to complete a, a strategic highway safety plan. In Massachusetts, that effort is led by the Department of Transportation. Uh, in the last uh, strategic highway safety plan, uh, the, our next speaker uh, recognized the critical importance of upgrading our distracted driving legislation in the completion of that plan, uh, for which I'd like to thank her. And I want to introduce now uh, the Secretary of the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, Stephanie Pollack. Yes, and as the governor just noted, a proud Newton resident as well. And I'm here really to talk about the importance of um, my employees at MassDOT, my friends and colleagues, and all of us, the role we all play in turning this law into what it was intended to be, which is a lifesaver. You know, we call these smartphones. Um, the good news is they're smart enough for most of us to do the work of uh, initiating phone calls, reading us texts. You can put it in a cradle if you want to continue using it while you're driving. Um, the bad news is it's not smart to use one with your hands while you're driving, and that's why we have this new law. MassDOT and the rest of the Commonwealth is equipping our motor pool cars with cradles so that our employees are not tempted to use it. I have told my employees, I'll be sending a reminder out this afternoon, that I expect them to serve as models, not only uh, when they are driving for work, but as representatives of MassDOT. Um, we all have some behavior change to do. Um, I suspect there are people in this room and people who are listening and watching to this who themselves have picked up a phone when they've been idling in congestion or stopped at a traffic light or thought it wasn't a really big deal. Um, but what we know is that's a very risky behavior and the purpose of that law is to put an end to it and our job is to help. Um, as Colonel Mason mentioned, starting this Sunday, you can get a warning. Um, starting April 1st, um, you can get uh, a citation. Um, the registry of motor vehicles, um, as required by the statute that the legislature passed, will actually be keeping track of warnings. They will actually show up in your driver's record. They do not create a surcharge on your insurance, but we've been gearing up to track uh, warnings, which will be the first time we've ever done that. The registry is also updating the driver's manual to help educate those who are learning to drive for the first time about the importance of, of not being distracted while you drive. Um, creating a course which will be required of anyone who gets two citations under this law will be required to take a course uh, to teach them more about distracted driving and hopefully contribute to that behavior change. But ultimately, despite the great work of the legislature and what I know will be the excellent work of state and local law enforcement in enforcing this law, it's really up to all of us uh, to honor the letter and the spirit of that law by uh, changing what we do by either putting the phone in a cradle or putting it down, putting our seatbelt on, our hands on the wheel, our eyes on the road, and driving safely um, for our own protection, for the protection of those in the car with us, and then for the protection of others' loved ones. We can save lives. This law will save lives, but all of us need to do our part. Thank you.
Thank you, Secretary. Uh, Governor, if we're uh, noting Newton relationships, I'm a proud graduate of Newton Catholic High School, <laughs> class of 81. Uh, you heard uh, before from state police regarding the importance of enforcement and changing behaviors. Local police departments have jurisdiction over most of the roads in Massachusetts, and they are very aware of the problems of distracted driving. Please welcome David McDonald, the chief of the Newton Police Department. Thank you and good morning. Welcome to Newton and uh, welcome to the Newton Police Department. If you don't think that this is an important law, take a look at the folks in the room here, the governor and the mayor. We have our state and local legislators here, uh, the colonel of the Mass State Police. Um, it's, it's a huge, hugely important law and you've heard a lot about it today. You know, I'll, I'll just relate that as a citizen of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, when I'm on my own time and in my own vehicle, um, out of my jurisdiction, uh, the irresponsibility of some operators is irksome. But as a police chief, it's extremely problematic. Um, I think I speak for the Colonel and my fellow municipal police chiefs when I say we're grateful to our legislators, the governor, EOPS, and everybody who had a hand in making this law a reality. Um, from my perspective, one of the things I love about it is it's simple, it's clear, it's easy to understand. Um, in Newton, we've been working with uh, Commissioner McGonigal from the DPW and his folks in the last couple of weeks to uh, try to uh, have our municipal employees understand the law so that we're all ready to rock and roll on Sunday um, and that everybody understands the uh, ramifications of violating the law. And uh, I'll say right now that we'll work with any private or public entity in helping to pass along understanding of this most important law. I don't have any doubt that this law is going to mitigate uh, the amount of injuries and potential tragedies that are part of distracted driving. And uh, I'd just like to say once again to all of the folks who, who played a role in, uh, in getting this uh, bill turned into law, thank you. Thank you, Chief. This, this law was passed with the active support of, uh, of many people in the community, uh, victims, survivors, families, and friends, they all leaned in, and they did it for a long time to get this law passed and move forward. Um, at the forefront of that, again for a long time, has been AAA in the effort to uh, not only pass this law, but to keep roads safe in general. AAA is involved uh, with uh, impairments of all kinds uh, related to driving, work zone safety, older and younger drivers, and in many other areas, and they're a great highway safety partner. And I'd like to introduce uh, AAA's, AAA Northeast's Mary McGuire. Thanks for the kind words, Jeff. Good morning, everyone. For those of us who work in the traffic safety community, this Sunday, February 23rd, will be a very happy day. Not only because the new distracted driving law represents an incredibly meaningful traffic safety victory for all of us who have tried for so many years to pass this law, but because the roadways of the Commonwealth will be safer when drivers put both hands on the wheel and their focus on the road and on all other road users, pedestrians, cyclists, emergency responders, and other drivers. And what is better than a law that can prevent injuries, thousands of injuries, and save lives? I testified on behalf of AAA in support of a hands-free cell phone bill during five consecutive legislative sessions. It was a struggle. We know from our AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety Research that distracted driving is a potent killer on our roadways, responsible for multiple deaths and injuries every single day. But the real driving force behind this new law wasn't the data or the numbers, compelling as they are. It was the tireless dedication, as Jeff referenced, of Bay State advocates who have lost loved ones that pushed the distracted driving bill toward the finish line, along with the support of the Baker administration, the legislature, and law enforcement, all of whom are here today. It was the work of Emily Stein, who could not be here today, but who lost her father, Howard, to a distracted driver. The work of Tom and Valerie Branley, who lost their beloved daughter, Katie, when she was just 24 years old. The work of Anna and Rich Levitan, who lost their daughter, Merritt, when she was just out riding a bike. The work of Jerry Sibley, who lost his precious son, Jordan, at the age of 18 and is here with us in the front row today. And the work of so many others who have lost children, parents, sisters, brothers, and friends, and who simply would not take no for an answer who made it their mission to pass this law so that others, 
will not have to suffer the terrible life-altering losses that they have endured. It's been my great privilege to work with all of them. Finally, we at AAA Northeast would like to thank the governor and lieutenant governor for putting traffic safety issues on the front burner this legislative session with both a comprehensive road safety bill and an impaired driving bill. With enhanced seatbelt use, tougher drunk and drug driving laws, and this new distracted driving law, we can prevent more people from being injured and dying on our roadways. So let's put down our phones, everybody. In the words of Anna and Rich Levitan, text less and live more. The life you save could be your own. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. And before we wrap up, I just want to um, uh, make a couple of notes about uh, important folks who are here. Everybody's important. But Wendy Landman is here from Walk Boston. And I mentioned at the front end of this that uh, pedestrians and bicyclists are affected in a greater way than uh, drivers are to these crashes. And it's important that we keep that in mind. Um, and our good partners at the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Gabriel Cano and Ali Jerome, are here as well. And we want to thank you for your partnership as well. Um, uh, we're going to wrap it up now, and any questions uh, that we want to take, we'll uh, take outside with the demonstration where State Police uh, Lieutenant Sonia and uh, the uh, local Newton Police will be uh, providing demonstrations on their enforcement activities out on Washington Street outside. So thank you very much. Uh, surprisingly, you'll probably see somebody in the next five minutes talking on their phone, using it, texting it at a red light. That is, uh, that is a no-go for, for the new law and enactment. Uh, you're going to see people in motor vehicle traffic. Um, we, were, we were talking about ride-alongs. There really doesn't need a ride-along. You guys can jump in your vans and drive down the street. You're gonna see the exact same thing as we are of people texting on the phone. Um, even in stop and go traffic, where we're at five miles an hour, they're gonna be stopping texting. That, is that gonna cause a fatal, is that gonna cause serious personal injury accidents? No. But when they have that small fender bender there and they pull into a breakdown lane, you have now slowed traffic down on that highway while we get cruisers out there to cover the accident, investigate the accident, cite people, call for a tow truck. And you guys all travel on this, through these roadways. The longer you sit in that traffic, the less we do. So even if we can clear those fender benders, those small minor crashes, we're all gonna be better off for that. So that's why even at stop signs, slow rolling traffic needs to be enforced as well. Obviously, 65 miles an hour is not the time to be talking or texting. So, uh, so what we're gonna do, um, this here we could actually have people, locals uh, might have somebody standing on a corner doing exactly what we're doing, pointing to cars in traffic and flagging them over. If we're in a better area where there might be a parking lot, we may have an unmarked cruiser sitting here doing the exact same thing. Uh, they can travel out and enforce, or we flag ahead to the, the officer down the street, pull that guy over. Uh, state police will be running with unmarked cruisers uh, on the highways, Route 9 during commuting traffic, Route 20 commuting traffic, looking for those violations as well, and immediately pulling them over. Uh, we had preposition, we had proposed putting together high visibility cars that you can't miss, and my troopers told me, we don't need unmarked cars. We don't need high vision. The, these people will be violating the laws next to us in our fully marked state police cruisers. We don't need any special tactics. They'll be doing it. So that is yet to be seen. I, I, I probably agree with them on that. Um, it's rampant. I'm just trying to sit, look and see in the cars there if anybody's, she's doing a very good job over there. Hands down, good. See anybody, Sarge? I do not. All right. Luckily, we have SUVs where we can see down a little better because what they'll do, it has to be affixed to the dash or to the windshield. It's got to be affixed. You'll see people, and we'll have to pull them over, where they're just staring into their lap. They're staring into their lap because they don't want to see us texting or, or manipulating the hands device. So we'll have to take special caution when you drive by a car and they're constantly looking down at their lap, what's in their lap. That might be a stop just to find out. Right? We need a little more than looking into your lap to stop them, but it leads us to further investigation on why they don't have it secured to something on their car. Sitting in a cup holder inside is not mounted. Uh, it should be affixed to the dashboard or the windshield. Drinking a cup of coffee, no problem. 
eating your sandwich no problem. When you have to drink the coffee and then touch the phone, that becomes a problem that would be in your mouth. Allowed one swipe or one touch to activate the hands-free mode. That's the simplest way to explain it. Phone rings, I can hit my phone to activate that so I can talk. All right. Um, my phone, uh, I have my phone and my Alexa in my car. So I can ask my phone to start a GPS device um, and it will pop up. I can then push the button for the microphone on the GPS for the location and say 470 Worcester Road, Framingham, Mass and allow that to go into its mode to give me my navigation. Okay. It's going to cause a problem with the old GPS systems that aren't voice activated because you shouldn't be clicking onto um, a window mounted GPS and then typing in 470 Worcester Road. That's the same thing as creating an electronic message. Yeah, I've got a 16 year old and an 18 year old daughter at home and uh, she is driving my car right now because it's got the built in GPS system uh, because even having that up is a mobile device and they're not allowed to have it at all. And for our 16, 17, 18 year old, 16, 17 year old, it's better for them to not be tempted and just put it away. There's a question whether uh, a handheld mobile device, does that constitute a GPS unit affixed to the window? There's never been any case law on it, there's never been fighting over it, we don't know. All right, for I would say get them off of their phone, get them a, a GPS device. I can't tell you right now if that's illegal, we haven't fought it yet. But it's not a hands-free mobile device, it's a GPS navigation device. No real answer for it, right? Um, but definitely not GPS on their phone. That'll get them in trouble.